Hey now, boys and girls. For those of you who watched last week's show, thought it was episode 78. It was actually 79. So, ha ha, the joke worked. Anyway, it's show 80. I am AJ underscore strong here for the Pucknologist and joining me as they should be. Rocket backhander on one side. What's up? <laughs> and on the other side, you love to see it. Hockey jerk. <laughs> <laughs> You really love to see it. The last two or three games I've watched involving the Las Vegas Knights have gone against them, uh, against their favor, and I, I very much enjoyed it. So you, you do love to see it. Love to see it. Hey, if you're brand new to this, uh, do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, whatever it is. However you're listening to us, do us a favor. Hit the follow, hit the subscribe, leave us a little love up there. We would certainly appreciate it. Out of the hot takery bakery this week, we have nothing. The oven is empty this week. There were really no like serious hot takes. So, of course, we're going to start around the NHL. And uh, so Don Cherry finally shown the door after making some dumb comments about those people not wearing poppies. Uh, Jerk, you had some good comments on Twitter today. Would you like to follow up? Yeah, and and there's, like, I, I, I was very hesitant to even say anything because... Too bad you know, John Cherry wasn't, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you, you may have 10 people who agree with you, and then you'll have 100 people who are like, you're the stupidest person I've ever met. So, but... I, I don't know. I, I just think I, I understand what he was trying to say. And, and it's 100 percent. It's 100 percent true. Like, like, hit, hello, tip, tap, tap, tap. I have my poppy here. There's no reason why everybody else shouldn't. But that's where the problem is, is, you know, all you have to do is say everybody should wear a poppy because X, Y, Z. But if you turn around and go, you know, Those hey, people. you insert group here, like, you know, all of a sudden it creates a bunch of problems. And I and I feel like. This is without getting too way yeah, off. The yeah, we don't want, we don't want to go political fiesta, but yeah, I, go ahead. I, I, I just feel like this is another situation where, like, where where somebody takes one little nugget of the whole situation and manifests it into something else completely. No, I totally agree with you. What he said was ignorant, uh, and he obviously could have phrased it better. Uh boy it's just if he just doesn't say those people and you made a great point is the whole thing if he just says hey i'd like to see more people ro- rocking the poppy i i think he's fine but as soon as he said those people rock it it just and again i don't want to go full-on politicizing the whole show but too late <sighs> yeah, he just, uh, you know, and, and Rock, I mean, 85-year-old guy, maybe, you know, maybe they should have been, like, drawing his exit out on a map, like, maybe 10 years ago. Oh, oh, way sooner. They should have known that he was going to get older and crotchetier. And, I mean, hell, even, okay, so to draw a parallel way out in, in you know, uh, east of New York in England, they, uh, Prince Philip, He's getting older and, and crotchetier, and he says some kind of inappropriate stuff and, and behaves inappropriately to the point where the royal family had to have an emergency meeting, and they removed him from a, uh, attending any and all royal functions, I think, like in a speaking uh, arrangement, so that if he shows up to as in a royal function, he's just is standing there. Like, you don't hear him or anything, <laughs> if at all, because he's just Looney Tunes. So, like, if even the royal family knows when to put the lock on their old men. I think that the NHL should have have put Cherry out to pasture a while ago to at least make him look good, you know? Yeah. And for those of you watching who are unaware, uh, get on YouTube and just type in the words Don Cherry Piano Desk. (laughs) It's one of the most fascinating things ever. It really is. And and I think with this whole situation, I don't – I don't think people should be surprised. Like, not that he said like offensive stuff, but just like, like they're like I saw people on Twitter saying, you know, he's getting fired. Like he's he's X, Y, and Z. And don't get me wrong, he's a legend. He's done a lot of fantastic stuff for the NHL. I mean, he's been 
involved with hockey longer than my parents have been alive. Put that in perspective. But, like, this is not the first time he said some dumb shit. Yeah. And like, I, I, I specifically remember him saying the Maple Leafs would not win a Stanley Cup until they dropped, stopped drafting people from Sweden. Like, you don't <laughs> say that. You well, don't say that. Uh, to, let's be honest. I mean, uh, Sportsnet, it, you have to think at some point, somewhere, someone behind the scenes was just like, thank you. We finally have an excuse. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? Like, and and from Roger's perspective, I mean, whether or not this is the case, you don't want it to look like you're giving somebody who makes offensive comments a platform. Of course. But either way, uh, so Don Cherry finally shown the door. It you know would have been nice for him to at least uh, whatever the situation may be that he come out at the beginning of this season and say you know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after this season, I'm going to be putting my piano desk away, cling, cling, clang, clang, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you know, Ron can sit here and, and go for another five or 10 years, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, boy, wouldn't it be fun to see Drew Remenda take that spot? I'm just saying, but that's only because I'm a huge Drew Remenda fan. So I, I've read a lot of people saying Brian Burke and I'm for that as well. Uh, sure. I mean, pretty much anybody, but hey, it should be me, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like hey, I can see it. Hey, bitch, does Brian Burke have more foreseen points than me? No. Okay, then. <laughs> Just saying. I'll put John Scott back in there. Oh, uh, that too. MVP. Yeah, that'd be good. I mean, if you can yeah. do All Star MVP, it could be broadcast MVP. I'm down with it. Just uh, saying. So. All right, so we get into the Don Cherry thing. He's shown the door. Let's get into some other stuff. Uh, suspensions being bandied about this week. Kind of cool. Uh, the Calgary Flames' Milan Lucic suspended for two games for quote-unquote roughing. Blue Jackets' Cole Sherwood. Um, it wasn't roughing. It was a straight-up sucker punch. Let's get into this. Uh, I mean, th- and here's the whole thing that I will tell you is – to me, a lot of it was, oh, Sherwood took a poke at the goalie. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what set Lucic off. No, you know what let, set Lucic off was the fact that he was trying to bring the puck up the boards and Sherwood straight stole your goal. Straight stole your goal. And in fact, let's throw this up one more time. Because it was just, you see Lucci's coming up and like he thinks he's going to be involved in playing Sherwood's just goes, oh, thank you very much. And gets a nice shot on goal, nice opportunity. Lucci comes in like a bitch. I mean, it, had that, I mean, okay, maybe it's just me, Rocket, but had that been Crosby or McDavid or Matthews, like, how long does Lucic get? Is it more than two games from Depl- Department of Player Safety? Uh, no. What, what do you think that is? I think it's two games. It's two games. It's even, two games. even had it been Matthews or Crosby or McDavid getting a sucker punch in the face, you think it still remains two games? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think if it had been Matthew or McDavid or Crosby and they had a concussion... And left the game, <laughs> and we're on long-term reserve injured. You know, injured. Uh, you know, oh. I, I, I think maybe it might have been different, but I know that they say that they don't do that. But you know, you know, and I know they do that. Jerk, what do you say? Uh, I, I absolutely think this is worth two games. I don't think it's worth more, but I definitely don't think it's worth any less either. I, I read some people saying. You know, oh, that's a fine. That's this. That's that. But like, See, I, couple... I go, I go five games specifically wow. because no, I go five because Lou Cheech. That let's let's throw a couple logs on the fire here. Number one, Lou Cheech has a history. Number two, his style of hockey went out a decade ago, mm-hmm. and so I look at that and it's like, dude, there's no place in the league for you sucker punching a guy. And again, I go back to the. Th- to the idea of, I don't think he went after Sherwood because Sherwood took a, po- a poke at his goalie. I swear to God, you look at the full video, and I'm telling you, that is straight up. Just, just watch. I mean, he he 
totally strips Lucic off the sideboard, makes him like Lucic already knows. Like he was traded from Edmonton to Calgary. He already knows he's on, you know, thin ice, so to speak. His style of hockey is just not in vogue anymore. So, yeah, well, and and a couple things to think about too. Number one, uh, I, I I've perused the NHL rule book a few times. Uh, nowhere does it say that you're allowed to jump off the top rope at somebody. So there's <laughs> Exhibit A. Um, number two, Milan Lucic was suspended for this same exact thing three and a half years ago. He punched. Uh, he punched Kevin Connaughton. In the face, same exact way, got ejected from the game, got suspended for one game. So now it's a two game suspension. But like, you're right, AJ, like I I, with Sherwood tapping the goalie, I'm sure, you know, it's seen before you tap the goalie and everybody else is going to have something to say about it. But usually that's a shove or maybe you grab the guy by the back of his sweater. But generally, you don't pop a guy like that unless a he popped you first or B, you're just a moron. Like, yeah. I think you're right. He got he got bamboozled over by the boards and was pissed off about it. And then he sees the same guy tap his goalie and he, you know, something clicked. And it was like, oh, I got to stomp this guy out right now. And <laughs> I, you know, I still go to the to the thing of it. he was just pissed that sure would like some no name guy that like, honestly, up until this penalty, this whole, you know, hubala going down. <laughs> No one ever heard the name Sherwood. And well, so there you go. Yeah, did you have something, Jerk? No, no. I, all right, all right. Let's you, move you, on. you covered what I wanted to say. There you go. Uh, so further along, uh, again, in this week of suspensions, oh, well, actually not a suspension per se, well, I, I can't say per se because it wasn't a suspension at all, but... Make up your mind. I know. Uh, the Jets' Lowry would hit Tuck in the corner for VGK. Was it a clean hit? Was it dirty? Poorly timed? Either way, uh, I, I, I look at this hit and I just go... It, you know, you, you look at it in real time. I don't... I Like, I feel like Lowry got most of the body... It might have come up towards the shoulder, but I feel like that was actually, it was a clean hit for the most part. Like it, for me, I just, if Tuck stays upright, maybe that doesn't happen. I mean, we see that so many times where, you know, the, the six foot one guy tucks his head just to scouch and the six foot three guy gets a really good hit in on him. It's kind of similar to the whole couple weeks ago when Brendan Dillon drilled Austin Matthews. Like they're both like the same height, or maybe Dillon has an inch on him, but Austin has his head down. Dillon takes advantage, and boom, keep your head up. So I mean, jerk. It, to me, that was a clean hit. What 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 say you, my friend? Uh, okay. Was it a clean hit? No. Was it a really? dirty hit? Was hold on, but it was not a dirty hit. Either. Well, it, it's a little bit of both. If you watch here, Tuck goes behind uh, number two on the Jets. I believe it's Batetto, and kind of I don't want to say he stumbles, but he definitely dips down a little bit at the worst possible time, and that's when Lowry popped him in the head. So it was obviously a dirty hit from the perspective that he hit him in the head, but it's not a dirty hit from the perspective that that's not where Lowry was going at all. Lowry was going shoulder to shoulder. You brace him on the boards. And it just so happened that Tuck dipped down, stumbled, whatever. Are you trying and... to say that Tuck tucked his head in? <laughs> that's, exact, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. And and even go if you go back, um, I don't remember who the Sharks played, but Gambrell was in a very similar situation. He's skating along the boards, and he stumbled a little bit and got popped in the head. And, and I saw a lot of people saying, well, how many games suspension is that going to be? And I was like... Zero, because Gambrell fell at the wrong time. And I think it's the same situation where it's just it's unfortunate, like series of events. Like, is it a two minute penalty for hit to the head? Absolutely. But I, I wouldn't suspend that. There's no obvious indicate he was targeted or anything like that. Well, and, and give it up to Lowry Rocket, because following that hit, 
He answered the bell. You saw Ryan Reeves, the guy who never takes a face-off, suddenly taking a face-off against Lowry. Clearly, it was answer the bell time. And again, this is one of those things where I look at the NHL and I go, oh, God. There's There's part of me that sits there and goes, okay, this is just silliness because there was no malice there. There was none of that. But it comes down to the fact that, oh, you know, somebody had a bad hit or somebody ducked their head, but oh, so we have to answer the bell. And of course, Ryan Reeves uh, is, I think, 0 for 1 in his career of taking a face off. They throw him out here and credit to Lowry Rocket. Lowry was just, you can see the officials were just like, okay, wait a minute. And Lowry was like, no, let's go. Go ahead. Credit to Lowry for saying, yeah, okay, you want me to answer the bell? I'm here. Ding, ding. Okay, but but what am I supposed to respond to in all of that, AJ? Like, I'm not sure where that question is. Well, I mean, did did you have a problem with the hit? Did you have a problem? And, oh. and if you didn't have a problem with the hit, did you have a problem Dude, with Vegas throwing that? Reeves out there to take that because he was going to beat the crap out of somebody? Oh. Didn't even matter who it was. No, I don't really. It's it's. Look, he has a job and he needs to make his bread, and that's how he makes his bread. Good for him. Talking about reviews. Yeah, and I don't fault Vegas for employing him because I mean that's that's what he's good at. So why wouldn't you hire professional to do that kind of stuff? <sighs> I don't know. I look at that and I'm just like, okay, fine. Yeah, I got no beef with it. I agree with Chuck. I think it was, you know, it was dirty in the sense that it was, yeah, the contact was dirty, but it wasn't. He just moved at the at the wrong minute, the wrong second, and now we have, yeah. All right. Ahead. Well, we get another one for you before we uh, play this this band out here. <laughs> oh, Columbus Blue Jackets, Nick. Uh, Felino has been suspended. It came out today. Three games for elbowing Colorado Avalanche forward Pierre Edward Bellamar, if I remember correctly, former Vegas Knight. So I'm not saying you love to see it, <laughs> but the way that it rolls is right in the neutral zone. Boy, that's a tough one. Felino. Like, I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to lay the big hit. But Belmar is in the neutral zone trying to make a... Now, could have Belmar gotten that off his stick a little faster? Sure. But I do feel like... You know what it is that, that, that drives me crazy is... Felino, I felt like jerk. He did... If, 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 he, if he keeps his arms to his side... It's fine. It's that elbow that he threw out. Yeah, I had to watch this hit, honestly, I think like four or five times just because Yo, I was trying absolutely. to... Absolutely. <laughs> only because I was trying to like really get a grasp of like what exactly went down. And I think, you know, the three of us, we were kind of talking off air and 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 rocket pointed out how it looked like Felino was kind of launching into him. But And I agreed with her, but then I watched again and I'm like, well, Felino kind of tripped on Belmar's feet. Now, I'm not saying that's an excuse to an elbow a guy in the mouth, but it definitely was not something I considered the first time around. And I think, to me, I think this is a three-game suspension only because Belmar was laying there motionless for for a hot second. I think if he popped right up, I I honestly don't think it's a three-game suspension. And and even then, to your point, AJ, you know, Belmar had the puck the whole time. Felino knew exactly where he was going. He's looking right at the side of his body. I I mean, I would probably have to watch seven or eight. But to me, it didn't look like he was thinking, okay, I'm going to decapitate this dude. I think you're right. He just wanted to lay the big hit. And a series of events happened. You know, he trips over Belmar's feet. Maybe Belmar dipped down at the last second. I this one I'm I'm is, is, I am unsure. what's the first what's the first th- what's the first three letters in suspension <laughs> little sus sus, sus yeah a little, a little little sus for me I suspension uh, sure I'll give you a game but I think it's three games just because Belmar was laying there yeah that's a, when when Belmar's head smacked against the ice right then it was like oh t- you like you, you it was like a Nintendo like ta-ting, ta-ting, ta-ting. 
Like you, you heard the three games right there. Uh, let's see a couple more for you around the NHL. Um, for those of you who are unaware, Patrick Waugh is still a coach and, and Patrick Waugh is still losing his mind. He got into it with an official and jammed his head into the, (laughs) the grill, the helmet of the official and damn near tried to get over the boards to get at him, just losing his mind. God love you, Patrick Waugh. Your fire, your passion is something to behold. I wish I would have been there on the Montreal bench when you told them, this is the last game I'm ever playing here. <laughs> it's just, either way, I just wanted to throw that out there because God love you, Patrick Waugh. You were so much fun to watch as a goalie, but boy you might be even a little more fun to watch as a coach. I'm just saying. Who's he coaching? Uh, jerk. I mean. Do I... Uh, he is coaching uh, the Quebec Ramparts. Yes. Okay. QMJHL, which is, um, it's also the team that he owns. So oh, okay. Convenient. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a little sus, if you ask me. <laughs> Oh, finally, around the NHL. Okay, if you don't know who Emily Kaplan is, uh, she's a writer for ESPN, oh, and she posted, uh, Emily Kaplan did, threw out a poll of the players talking about, oh, just different things, one of which was, uh, you know, like the last city that you, you know, the, the city that you dread going to on a road trip. I think it was something like 34, 38, whatever it was. The majority has said Winnipeg, followed up by, you know, in a hot second by Buffalo. Um, I didn't see any mention of Wi-Fi signal, but uh, boy, Winnipeg, Buffalo, not getting a lot of love. And another question that was really fun there, Rocket, was like, have we reached critical mass when it comes to gritty? Like, are you tired of hearing about this goddamn mascot? And from what I understand, like most of the people were like, no, good for the game. Hashtag good, yeah. for, good for game. I don't, I, I think you can safely say we haven't, we haven't yet read, uh, we haven't met uh critical mass with this. Oh, critical. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right. Uh, jerk. I mean, what, <laughs> jerk, your thoughts on, on, on some of the stuff from Emily Kaplan, because there's some good ones that went back and forth, but. But it just seemed like the majority of it was, yeah, let me dump all over Winnipeg and Buffalo. And that was kind of like it for that article, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I bet, well, I bet you that they don't have a coffee cart in Winnipeg or Buffalo. <laughs> oh, damn. A uh, couple of, I mean, one thing that stood out to me, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, question number two on that little little dealy there you shared with us. Uh, which team has the best visiting locker room? The three highest answers were the three newest arenas. So, at, shocker. Yeah, a shocker. But it's probably probably saying like, hey, uh, the other twenty eight teams in the NHL, you better uh, you better figure it out there, chief. Um, <laughs> But, well, that's what happens when you put a you know champagne room what? in the in the visitor's locker room, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or else what? The coaches, the visiting team is just gonna be like, nah, we're gonna forfeit that NHL game because their locker room doesn't have <laughs> green M and M's. Nah, yeah. come uh, on, man. Hey, lucky it has as as for gritty fatigue, I, I I'm on record as saying I I think mascots are lame, and I. Yes, I do have greedy fatigue. I don't think it's I don't think it's fair. Uh-oh. I I don't think it's fair that Jake Voracek has to grow his hair like that and run around <laughs> like a painting hack. <laughs> like they should just let him play hockey. I mean, he was a good player. He had like 84 points one year and then they made him run around as this jackass and <laughs> now, year. now he's struggling. Uh, struggling. You know what? Uh, I'm I'm good with gritty. D- do I think he got a way too much pub last season? Yeah, a scotch. But uh, for me, I look at it and I go, you know what? Good for hockey. If it's getting the word of you know, oh, it's sure. you know, it's not the Philly fanatic. It's not UP or whatever. Uh, fine. If it gets more <laughs> hockey stuff, you know, do I want to see late night talk show hosts? infusing 
gritty into their comedy bit rather than the fanatic or somebody else absolutely so it, you know hey it, it's it's more hockey jerseys on tv i'm fine with it and and i will say not like gritty has its own thing but nothing is as bad as the uh the flames minor league team mascot from like four or five years ago uh the they horse? no like oh. i don't know what the hell it was but they they literally <laughs> ran a promo they ran a promo where a mascot that had to deal with like flame and fire and stuff like that was like attacking firefighters. Oh, that's, <laughs> and that's a good look. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, not like as, as much as I'm not really keen on gritty, nothing beats that in terms of like just being ridiculous. Christ. Wow. All right. So, uh, I think we've gone around the NHL about as far as we can. So let's get into the week in sharks hockey. Since we last spoke to you, after that week, the Sharks have gone, uh, well, let's be honest, the Sharks, after just digging a hole, they've done their best to climb out of it, going 3-0 and in games versus Chicago, Minnesota, and Nashville. Prior to the Chicago game, of course, Leon Bergman and Shimmick, hashtag miss you Shimmick, called up, actually foreseen by AJ. I got points, yes. Who? Yeah. Okay. Who's AJ? Never heard of him. Yes. <laughs> uh, but in that, Brodzinski would go down. But uh, in that one, Booyah, Shimmick returns with the Bergman call up after three games and five assists in six games with the Barracuda. And uh, it felt like he played a good game. But either way, in that victory for the Sharks. Uh, a couple days later, Bergman got sent down. But did you feel Rocket that like how how excited could you get? Like after this long spiral that the Sharks have been on, it's like okay, they come back, they win against Chicago at home after losing like four straight against a like the worst team in the Central. How excited can you get about it, Rocket? I think this is a combination of like the sharks are bad, but they're not that bad, and the teams that they played have been good, but they're not that good. So the optic of winning is always a positive one, but it might be slightly skewed in that the comp- the opponents have been. I don't know. This is like <sighs> these are garbage games that the sharks needed to win, and they won them. Well, probably could have said the same thing because. Ottawa a few uh, a couple weeks earlier but yeah that's the whole thing is the Sharks finally are looking at these garbage games and saying oh we can beat these guys okay we'll go Ron Burgundy we can beat these guys for know. now yes uh jerk your take on like you know picking up a victory <laughs> after like losing five straight yeah, obviously, I'm going to pull out another one here. You love to see it. But <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't recall if it was last week or if it was two weeks ago, but the three of us all talked about how important the home cooking would be in the month of November. And, and so far, I mean, you know, they, they've got 3-0 and in the last three games, which is a small sample size. But, like, you know, ju- <laughs> yeah, and, but I mean – you know, if you like, obviously Minnesota is one of the worst teams in the league. Yes. But if you watch how that game went down, they clearly did not want to be pushed around. And yeah, the Sharks let it slip away from them. But I thought Jones held them in that game. And and same thing with Chicago. Chicago is struggling right now, but Chicago has a lot to prove this year. I mean, like in their organization, they think they're a playoff team. And so even though they're out of the mix, it's the same thing with the Sharks. Like anybody who like even though the Sharks are second to last in the Pacific, I don't think anybody should take them lightly for that same reason. And, and obviously Nashville, I mean, Nashville's my pick to win the central division and they got a, a very fun come from behind win, uh, over them in the shootout. I believe AJ and I talked about who would get the shootout winner, but that's another conversation. Keep the change. Thanks for coming. Um, (laughs) so you, you, it's obviously really good to see. I mean, we talked about how the sharks needed it to turn it around like ASAP as possible. And they have, and they've taken advantage of the home cooking. So, you know, it's, (laughs) <laughs> There's not really a whole lot to complain about this week what, in my eyes. Hold on, what the hell is ASAP as possible? You literally as don't soon as, as, possible, soon as, possible, as possible. possible. Yeah, I'm a, it, it's, stress, it's it's stressing the importance of it. 
Okay. Uh, after the, stressing after, me out is what you're doing. Yeah, right. Uh, so after. Okay, bo- okay, boomer. Oh, let's not go there. Uh, so <laughs> after picking up a victory, Shimmick's return. Uh, so Chicago again. I was one of those guys. I'm like, can't get too excited about a game. You know, like the the Sharks are on a downward skid. You can't get too excited about beating a team that's at the bottom of the division. So after Chicago, then, oh, Minnesota comes in. Who is even worse? And in this one, yeah, the Sharks would win a 6-5 to five nail-biter that should have never been a nail-biter because the Sharks went up 4 nothing in the first period. And then, and, and I believe at one point, this game was 6-1. to one. And then the Sharks said, you know... <laughs> Uh, like, you, know, be fun. <laughs> you, you know what like this whole thing for playing hockey for two periods yeah that was fun but maybe not for the third you know i mean it's just like yeah. jesus i mean rock uh, how do you even justify just watching that third period where the sharks were just i mean they were so dominant four go four nothing in the yeah. first period and then it ends six to five yeah um, I was really, cause a lot of these games start at, uh, at, especially when they're home games, they start not, they don't start soon enough for me to watch the entire game. So I end up missing like that last 20 minute frame. So I would watch the first two and I was like, all right, great, cool. And then I got to work and I didn't get to check the score or anything. And, and I, I finally checked the score and wait, what? <laughs> uh-huh. So, um, Again, that was was sort of an indicator to me that I shouldn't have too much excitement, faith, or hope for this team because they still do stupid shit like that. Um, and if if it's if it's a if, if it's a two sided event for the Sharks, where for for them to get a W on the score sheet not only means that they need to win their game, but the opponent needs to lose their game as well. Um, like it, it it I think skews the metric because I don't think that. A couple of these games, the Sharks won. I think that the other team lost. Like Chicago, I I don't think she, I don't think the Sharks won that game. I think Chicago straight up just lost that game. So I can't like I can't get excited about this team until they actually start showing up and looking competitive against other competitive teams and not just the peripheral garbage teams. Then maybe I can get excited about it. But they, if they go out there and they they continue to do hot garbage like you know score four and then you're like bring back pizza, you cowards! Just put that out there. Pizza. I had to put that out there because yeah. I saw somebody wrote that on Twitter and I was like, yeah, yeah, now we're cooking. And, you know, so it's like, oh, it's court for one period. Wait, wait, wait. We gave up how many and now we're, oh, God. Oh, God. I can't, you can't do that. No, it was you can't t- do that. It was a tire <laughs> fire. It it happens. I mean, it, it happens to the best of them. Uh, but still, I mean, Jerk, you're talking about a team that is so desperate to put together something positive, something going forward. To go up for nothing and let a team climb back like that, and this is, you know, fine. Here comes all the people on Twitter to burn me in effigy. Um, Carlson, Eric Carlson, had a good week, but in this game, he made two or three stupid plays. Oh, sure, but I and, mean, other players did as well. Yeah, no, there was some other plays, but that's the whole thing. And this is the thing that I'm going to hang my hat on for the longest time is, yeah, other players did as well, but other players aren't the highest paid guy on the team. <sighs> and that it, that's where it's going to come from. That's I, where it's going to go. Right or wrong, that's that's going to be the thing. Is when you're making the most money, your screw-ups are going to be the most magnified. Yeah. Right or wrong? Yep. Yep, can I, can, let, me, can I, let me ask a hypothetical. Sure. So... Let's say, and, and if you Ferraro makes the same some, mistakes, and for people looking at Ferraro, no, go, he's a rookie. He's going to learn. Well, okay. So hold on. Let me let me just let me see if I can quantify this. So let's say it's it's Game Seven, Stanley Cup Final. Sharks no, and you can't do whoever. that. Can't hold do on. That. Yeah, oh, I can do whatever I want. Hold oh, on. playoffs are a whole <laughs> different animal, my friend. Playoffs? Uh, okay. Playoffs. So you can't let, do that. Okay, so let's just say hypothetically. Let's say. 
Eric Carlson, or I'm sorry, let's say the Sharks, it's in overtime. The Sharks put the puck in their own net. They lose the Stanley Cup and everybody cries. If Eric Carlson does it, or if the lowest paid guy on the team does it, are you any more or less pissed off about what happened? You're still pissed off about it, but if it's a Mario Ferraro, you're going to sit there and go, oh, you poor rookie. But, you know, yeah. like, they're going to look at it like that, where they're going to look at somebody like Eric Carlson and go, mother son of a. B-, and, and every expletive, you've been in the league. You yeah. You've been in the league for 10 years. You're the highest paid defenseman in the entire league. And you're going to let that get behind you? That's that's what's going to be said. And and I think to a certain extent, I think it's it's rightfully so. You're the highest paid defenseman, not in your division, not in your conference, in the entire league. So mm-hmm. if you make both, like, everybody's going to make mistakes. I get that. I get that without a doubt. But I'll tell you, in that game of, against Minnesota, I was there front row of the upper deck. I saw Carlson make three massive brain farts, two of which were from behind his own net, where one of which he pa- he literally passed the puck to Marlowe, who was skating off. Like, we could all see. He was like, <laughs> Eric Carlson at that point was literally the only one who didn't realize that Marlowe was getting off the ice to get on the bench. And you see him put it into Marlowe's skates, and you're just going, what the hell are you doing? And that mm-hmm. was, and that's the thing with Carlson to me as well is that sometimes he needs to. Uh, oh, this is a word that that jerk will like. He needs to learn how to finesse the pass a little bit. <laughs> he because a lot of times he puts he just goes way too much smoke. Man, all of his passes are coming in hot, and I just look at that. There was a lot of smoke on that pass, but you're throwing it to a guy who's that everybody except you can see is leaving the ice Mm -hmm. it's again it's just look is carlson has he gotten better the last week or so yes he has two three two things can be equally true he's also made some bonehead goddamn mistakes and and i'm going to go to my grave saying this when you make mistakes the term and the money tied up into your contract are going to determine how close the magnifying glass is to those mistakes. Right. And and, and I, I do see where you're coming from. I do agree with the whole passing thing. There was, I think it was in Nashville on the power play where Carlson gets the puck and he like whipped it over to LeBanc and it hit the boards. And I'm like, Jesus, like slow down a little bit. So it, I do yeah. know where you're coming from in that yeah. respect. A little, 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 it, little too much smoke. He, he also yeah. had one, um, I, th- I don't know if it was on the power play or on the kill, that uh, he like tried to fire one over to Burns in his defensive side and played mm-hmm. way too much heat on that pass. It, it this whole, like I was thinking about this like either everything needs to start clicking or everything needs to fall apart because <laughs> with, because with this situation right now I feel like like you like I can look at it one way and think everything's fine. What are you talking about? And you can look at it another way and say everything's a disaster. What are you talking about? And I think in some cases we would both be right and we would both be wrong. It's yeah. like this this situation I feel like is very just way too wishy washy for me. And the other thing I do want to say really quick, and this is not targeted at you, but there are some people on Twitter who like yes, Eric Carlson's made some dumb moves. No denying that. That's you can't hide from that. But it's like like people just assume that he's not like good anymore. And I'm like, when he's playing, like when he's playing well, like, are you watching the same game? Yeah, no, not saying he's not, you know, that he hasn't gotten better week over week, but, and, and again, I'm just one of those guys that I sit there and I hear all the defenders. And this also goes for the, for the Martin Jones defenders is Mm -hmm. it's, I just get tired of hearing Simple excuses, you know, well, you know, when it's Eric Carlson, well, you know, he just had a baby. We all know what he went through last season. Yes, that's true. He's human and I will get that. And okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But how long do I have to do that? Like how many games do we get to? Then we can say, okay, him having a child now has nothing to do with him making stupid ass mistakes. Or, and and then, and then what's the deal with Martin Jones? You know, it's like, oh, like literally... Okay, let's move on to Nashville. 
because the Sharks, Martin Jones let in one goal. And I swear to God, yeah, and this is one of the reasons why I, I just need to like drop social media like a hot potato. You, I, I, you could look at my Twitter feed and you would see one tweet that said, oh my God, Martin Jones played that completely wrong. He was way too far in his net. And mm-hmm. then the tweet right below that said, why was Martin Jones that far out of his net? He needs to play. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, yeah. whoever said that second one is wrong, but go ahead. Well, yeah, but but see, but that's what I'm saying is, and you're proving my point. That guy, <laughs> he's wrong. It, yeah, okay, but it, and it's all the way that you illustrated to him, and you could like take a screenshot or whatever and say, look, this is typically, you know, a goalie's going to have his most success when he plays that type of a play like this. You can't be that 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 far in net. You got to cut off an angle or whatever. But you have to have you have to at least be respectful in what you're trying to illustrate. And that's the whole thing is there is no discourse in the public square of Twitter anymore. It's just mm-hmm. if you say one thing and somebody comes at you, even if they are respectful, to say, well. My perspective is if he does this and blah, 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 and it's, no, you're just wrong. And it, uh, it's just mind, mind numbing. Uh, either way, I think we can say top to bottom, Nashville, this game is probably Rocket, the best game that Martin Jones has had this season, especially when you take into account the third period in the overtime. Yeah, no, I fully agree. Um, it's nice. It's nice. No, I agree with you. It was is his most solid game. Can't really fault him for much. No, really and, no and, and seven round shootout. Yeah, that was agonizing. Like when it gets to the shoot, like I don't mind three on three. I think that's fun. Um, but when it gets to the shootout, I just it gets agonizing for me because <sighs> at that point it's 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 a crapshoot at that point. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the shootout. Uh, you know, I would much rather them. I don't know. Just, I mean, we all know the NHL is just not going to settle for ties anymore. I would like to see them extend three on three to ten minutes because for the most part, since they've gone to three on three. And this is something that uh, you know, friend of the show, friend, you know, friend of everybody, Darren Sharkstats, uh, Uncle Darren. He, I would love to see how many games have gone to a shootout since they've switched to three on three. When you compare it to the previous five seasons, you know, I, I do, mm. en- I do enjoy the three on three. I enjoy that immensely. What, in fact, what was it? What game was it? Like a couple days ago, uh, somebody screwed up. Was it, was it the Sabres? I, either all I know is the but like there was some play behind the net, and when it went the other way, all the 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 you know the home team or whatever was all caught behind their own blue line. And it was literally <laughs> three guys, and they were just kind of like, "Okay, who wants it, guys?" <laughs> like there was no way this puck isn't going in. Who needs it? You know what I'm talking about, Jerk? Yeah, it was um, Vancouver and St. Louis. So, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that was so silly. But anyway. I, oh, go yeah, ahead. The, I was going to say, I, I agree. I think the three-on-three should be 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. Just, especially the last year or so, like – you a lot of these games that are going to three on three overtime, the action doesn't start until there's like two minutes and yeah. thirty eight seconds left, and it's like, well, okay. And I mean, don't get me wrong; those two minutes and thirty eight seconds are fast and furious, and you almost fall out of your chair watching it. And I enjoy it, but it's like, how would that be? Like, that'd be so much better if, like, if it's ten minutes, and so you spend the first two or three minutes getting all that dumb crap out of the way, and then you have <laughs> seven minutes of just balls to the wall insanity and. Oh, there was chances some... both ways all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, one kind of thing that popped into my head while we're all sitting here, and there's obviously a lot of logistical things you'd have to work out, but what if what if the NHL made overtime like soccer, where as soon as regulation ends, it's just overtime right off the hop, and you just keep going with whatever you're doing? I like you it. You know what I mean? I like it. Like, yeah. okay, like... You're, it's three three at the end of the third, and it's you know three two one zero, and then the clock starts counting up to five minutes. Yeah. No, you gotta ha- you gotta you gotta scrape the ice, dude. That's the thing. Like you don't have to go out there and reset the grass field. You do have to reset that ice after a hard twenty. She 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 makes a solid point, 
But mm-hmm. I do like the fact that, yeah, if they could just come out, do a really fast dry scrape, and it's like, okay, you, like before that scrape gets halfway down the ice, like, okay, both coaches, turn in your you know opening three guys. Let's go. Move. Uh, no, I liked it. Either way. Yeah, and because – and I – I, I don't recall exactly, but I, I think now, I think going back to last season, I think they started doing a short commercial between the third and overtime. And if I'm remembering correctly, there used to be no commercial at all. Yeah, I think you're right. And see, then they would go. I, to, I remember commercials. Then, they weren't very long, see, but I remember them. I see. I rem, I remember like the third period end, and it was like, okay, overtime's going to happen as soon as these things happen. And then if it goes to the shootout, that's when they go to commercial. And now I feel like it's flipped. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but mm. <laughs> Mandela effect. Mandela. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, let's get to that last game. It was against Nashville. Two one win in the shootout. Took seven rounds, uh, but the Sharks did beat the Preds two to one. AJ and Jerk pick up four scene points. The reason being, of course, is uh, first off is me just watching. God, let me see who who took shots in that. It started with LeBanc. Uh, I. Uh, LeBanc, Couture, uh, both LeBanc and Couture went um, backhand. Carlson went. Carlson Marlo. went. And uh, yeah, Marlo Burns. Uh, but the thing for me, it was just like, actually, Couture might have went forehand. I just remember there were like six shots before Meyer was given the opportunity. And the, the Sharks had six tries. And I think five of six were backhands. And I was like, stop it already stop trying to go backhand and the other thing is that when it got to like the fifth one i'm like how the hell was meyer not out there like i'm i'm sitting here watching the game and i'm like i'm writing down i'm like okay i'm going logan i'm going timo and i'm going kane maybe hurdle for the last one but either way my top two were logan and timo and so, it, you know, when it gets to like round six and it's like, you know, and now Brent Burns and I'm like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> like, where yeah, the hell the is Timo? Thing. And then, of course, Timo gets out of here and there he is the one to do it. But hello, huge stick taps to Martin Jones for, you know, stoning seven. I mean, those, the, you know, there was there was a couple shots where it's just kind of like, oh, all right. I mean, you know, like they literally put it right into the pad and was like, here you go. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he did stop some good shots, uh, but it did drive me crazy that Timo wasn't put out there earlier. But again, foreseen points for me and Jerk on that. Uh, but let's get into the overall king picture after we've already talked for like 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> Shimmick finally returns. Hashtag miss you, Shimmick. Uh, coincidentally, Vlasic looking much better over the last few games, as has Martin Jones as has EK65. So with games coming up, now remember, we're we're at that point where the Sharks were playing six home games straight. They lost the first two, won the next three. Of course, the next one coming out of the shootout. But out of those three that they won, two against Chicago and Minnesota, not the biggest teams, but... How huge rocket is it going to be if the Sharks are able to pull out a victory against Collar McBroken and the machine that is Leon Dreisaitl right now? Uh, I wouldn't say it would be, you know, like Mount Rushmore size huge, but I think it would be a, an indicator that the team is trending in the right direction if they can beat those pieces. I mean, it's not like Connor McDavid is going to win a, a Stanley Cup anytime soon with that team. So, I don't know. I mean, number one in the division by a substantial margin, they might. Yeah. Still early in this season. Oh, hundred percent, it is. Oh, hashtag small sample size. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, you know, as we were all lamenting that the sky was falling, the hockey uh, hockey news had an article basically saying that firing DeBoer was literally the only option that Wilson had right now if the losing would continue, but. The, lo- the hemorrhaging has stopped. We have found, uh, you know, we've been able to carterize the wound for now, but it doesn't get too much easier just when you think about three of the next four games, two of them are versus Edmonton. You have an uh, Anaheim game or a, a game against Anaheim. Anaheim right now, as we're talking, is a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde. 
you see them one game and you're they're kind of like, oh boy, I can't believe they're not doing a little bit better. And then you see another one and you go, Gibson, bro, I had more respect for you. What the hell are you doing? And uh, Detroit, can we just talk for a hot second? I'm, I'm just going to hand this over to Jerk. Um, Detroit, 35 seconds left against Vegas. Go. Oh, you love to see it. I mean, especially... <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you do though, and it, and it was my boy Anthony Mantha could have had for the Sharks, but anyways, you know he's big guy, but he flies like a freaking fairy on a I don't know Peter Pan reference flying. Think about it. Uh, I'm all over the place, and just snipes it on Malcolm Subban, and it was fantastic. Assisted too um, by Robbie Fabry, who the Red Wings just picked up and has had an immediate impact, and I. I very now, much enjoyed on. that. Let me let me ask you about that trade. That trade seemed a little weird to me. I I think if you're if you look at it from the Blues perspective, I think I think their <laughs> you GM, love to see it. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I I just think the Blues, you know, like Robbie Fabry has a boatload of talent, you know, and I mean the when the Sharks and the Blues squared off in 2016, you saw that firsthand, but. You know, all the injuries he's had obviously made it hard for him to crack the lineup. He did win a Stanley Cup with them last year, but he didn't really factor in a whole lot. Um, and I think what a lot of this is is just the GM saying, look, we know you're a hell of a player, but you don't really have a spot here, so we're going to send you somewhere where you do have a spot, which I really like that. You saw that. You saw Joe Sackick do that with Jerome McGinla a few years ago as well. And then from Hashtag Detroit's dad. perspective, yes. And from Detroit's perspective, it's just like, good God, we need anything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> Holy crap. And I mean, so far, so good. Two goals and an apple in his first two games. You love to see it. Well, and speaking of St. Louis, as you brought it in, uh, let's get into our final notes here. Uh, Jamie McGinn has been brought in by St. Louis, former Shark. Brought in by the Blues on a PTO. Um, what's this about? Are you asking me again? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. I'll just go quick and then I'll let Rocket go. Um, so what this is, what this is about is uh, the Blues forwards are seriously injured and they need NHL bodies to potentially skate with the team. There you go. Um, all right, Rocket. Anything? I am unsure. I have absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's all good. All right, let's uh, let's finish this off. A uh, couple uh, interesting little tidbits. Uh, Jerk is familiar with the Vegas area, as am I a little bit. There is a very nice casino down there, the Cosmopolitan, who has apparently opened up a lawsuit against Evander Kane for half a mil. It seems that Evander Kane during the playoff run during uh, or, uh, versus the Golden Knights last April had some uh, good time, hashtag good times. Uh, opened up markers that totaled 500K, and Evander Kane has essentially or evidently been a little tardy in paying off his markers. Uh, Rocket, you're also a little bit familiar with the uh, the casino vibe. I mean, my whole thing is like, d didn't Evander Kane like sign a forty nine million dollar contract? I mean, forty nine million dollars you can't pay pay off five hundred k. If you just do the quick math, that's like having forty nine dollars and refusing to pay fifty cents. Like, what do you think this is about? This is odd. Yeah, but they don't give you that forty nine million dollars in one lump sum, and they're like. Pfft. Here you go. Let's talk to you again when your contract is up for negotiation. You know, it's not like it's not like a structured settlement. It's but you still, can't just, you, you can't know, call like he got paid off for last seven seven NHLPA cash now. You know, you can't. <laughs> yeah, but he got his seven hundred. He got his seven hundred mil from last season, and he's balking okay. at five hundred k. Like, what do you? What I'm, I'm just I'm curious. I'm like, I, I sure blew me well, away. And and if I if I I, I do have the receipts. So hey uh, last season, Evander, Evander Kane from because for those who don't know, you only make money for the regular season in the playoffs. You play for free. So from October to April, Evander Kane grossed, not netted, grossed 
uh, $6 million in his salary. But on July 1, 20, what year is it? July 1, 2018, <laughs> <laughs> July 1, 2018, he was paid $3 million in full. And July 1, 2019, he was paid $2 million in full. So my point being, just pay it back, bro. Yeah, it just, it just seems really <laughs> odd. But, I mean, it, it's not like we don't have evidence of him with stacks of cash in Vegas. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, it, and could be, it could be just as simple as that he didn't, uh, he didn't realize that he hadn't paid him back. I, I was going to say, like, what if this whole situation blows over because he's literally like, oh, crap, my bad. Oops, sorry, here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it could be something as simple as that. Just yeah, I, I, I fire your business pay- manager. I, I, I washed my pants and the ticket was in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, I don't know, like maybe he he might be the kind of person to where um, he's he's resentful at the Cosmo for, for not winning there. So he's like, I'm not going to pay them back. F them people. Yeah, that's not the way I, Vegas works. <laughs> no, I know that. But the thing is, like, that's how that's how the, oh, gosh, darn it. Hold on a second. Sorry, you guys. There's like 700 people in my house right now. Hey, now. Well, can't hear any of them. And also, Either okay, way. like there's like small barking dogs and stuff. It's not. It's, it's all not right. ideal. It's, okay. It's fine. So the thing about degenerate gamblers is that they're degenerate gamblers, and a lot of them have <laughs> um, a lot of them have emotional control issues. Our boy Evander, hey, a prime candidate for that. So uh, the rules don't always apply to them in their world, meaning a- that. If they don't win when they think that they should win and they've borrowed money, then they don't need to pay it back. How how much you want to bet like it was only at two hundred K, but then like he was then Evander was like at a craps table and Ryan Reeves walked by and said, You don't have the balls to play more than that <laughs> and then boom, oh, five hundred K. Anyway. All man. right. Either way, I'm sure Evander will get that situation sorted, sorted out. out. Uh, God knows if it was, you know, 40, 50 years ago, that situation would have been sorted out before Evander would have been allowed to leave Vegas. Uh, yeah, anyway, walk again. right. Or skate. Uh, so another thing, the sharks foundation, this is kind of an interesting note for me. Uh, if you remember last year, the sharks foundation put out two kind of not prizes, I guess, but two packages, I think is the right term. One was for a thousand dollars, and I believe that was the teal package or something, where it was you give us a grand and we will give you an autographed jersey, a backpack, a, a pillow or a fleece blanket or something like that, uh, drink coasters, a puck of a, a you know, assorted accoutrement. And I was say, was it, weren't there like kitchen utensils in there? There, there might have been, uh, and then. It, for 250 you will get everything but the signed jersey. And from what I've seen, the $1,000 packages sold really well. And I think there might have only been 200, 250 of them. Uh, but there was like 1,000. Well, maybe not. No, I think it might have been like close to 1,000 of the smaller packages. And the Sharks had a very difficult time selling off to the rest of those. This season, they've disregarded the whole small package thing because obviously what I just said had a hard time moving those. Why would why would you want to associate with anybody who has a small package? Rocket? Oh God, don't leave that in there. He's not wrong. (laughs) So this season they've released a new version of what they're calling the Teal Tote for a thousand dollars. Uh, the weird thing was, is at first they wouldn't list all the things that came with it, but as time moved on and they sent out a direct email and it got closer, it ended up being a signed limited edition Jersey, a backpack, a baseball cap, a signed puck, a, a glass bottle opener. And when I say glass, it's not that it's made of glass. It's, pl- it's, you know, it's that heavy duty plastic because they've made it from the glass that made up the glass around the rink. So it's that oh, ridiculous heavy I, duty plastic, you know. From I the, like those. Those yeah, are cool. I thought that was cool. Um, a cherry wood. It looks like a drink coaster, but it is a wireless phone charger, and a fleece blanket. Um, fans getting fleeced indeed. 
uh, again, uh, it's, you know, uh, I don't know. I, the thing about it that I look at it and I go, look, uh, you know, the, f- uh, you have to put on top of this. Okay. It's for charity. It's for charity. It's for charity. Like you have to put it on your head, but we're all reasonable people and we're all of the idea of you want to get value for your dollar. If you look at those items, it's, I, I look at the glass, the, the, you know, the, the glass bottle opener, you know, I try to look at these things, individual items. Well, what would I pay for that bottle opener? Um, yeah, 35 bucks. You know, I, I, if that was, I look at all these things, like if they were available in the shark store, what would I pay for it? And it's like, but that bottle opener, eh, I'd, I'd go 35 bucks because it's made up from glass that was used from around the ring. The wireless phone charger, that's not something that I would buy. The blanket, uh, not something of what I, w- I would buy, but if I would, eh, okay, 20 bucks. The ball cap, um, 20, 25 bucks. The signed puck, 20, 25 bucks, maybe. The backpack, uh, 40 or 50. So you look at the items that are there. I haven't even gotten to the jersey and I'm already like less than $200. And then you throw the jersey on top of it and it's like, well, you can already get a jersey in the store for like 250. So we're at 450. So you want me to pay an extra $550 for an autograph essentially cuz the thing that and this is the thing that that t- now in in jerk you are as much of a jersey snob as I am. This is the thing that gets me about it that I'm kind of that would you say you're crest, pressed by it? Well, the, a little bit the the crest of the jersey it's not like a stitched crest. You know, it's it's like the shoulder patches on the current jerseys. Like I'm literally wearing a quarter zip right now that has a patch on it. And when you rub rub this patch, you can feel all the stitching up and down in the center it's 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 it's, it's a great patch but if you when you the, rub this patch you can yeah, feel you all can of the regretful it. decisions i've made you can feel <laughs> right? all of the regret that i have over these touch stupid it. quarter zips touch that i keep it. buying touch it's it. a nice patch touch, touch it. it touch the patch touch feel it. my patch touch it i encourage you if you ever see aj in person to just go and rub his patch touch it jesus uh, <laughs> yes but the whole thing is that you feel this and it's like it you can see it. the the patches that they have on the current sharks teal and white the shoulders it's it's not an embroidered patch like this it's like it's a pre-printed thing where they just stitch the outside that's it and that is the crest for this teal tote jersey and to take it a step further the sharks had uh they had warm-up jerseys for the uh, mi- military night, and those, those weren't were, even the, those were like printed, like screen printed. Those jerseys were pretty sharp, though. They were sharp, but they were screen printed, and you're just kind of like, wait, what? So anyway, I mean, <laughs> are. You know, if you had a thousand, you know, if you had a G in your pocket, are you like putting that down? It's again, I think if they take a little more time on that patch, you just kind of go, you know what? Okay, that that could be decent looking, but I just look at it and I go, could have been better. Could have been better. Yeah, I, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that the warm up jersey that I have from last season, I'm happy that that shoulder patch and that crest are patches, not yes. like. Not whatever some screen <laughs> like, printed thing. Like a decal deal. Yes. And, and and I don't really have an explanation for why or a theory. Um I guess it's just a thing. And and even then that jersey that came in the teal tote, which by the way, teal tote kind of sounds like teal town. And so every time somebody says that I think we should get a nickel. But anyways, um you know, that jersey in the teal tote. I feel like it was a really sharp jersey, but to your point, that crest sucked. <laughs> yeah, sharp jersey, but the crest needed to be better. But anyway, that's, that's again, that's our two cents. And I do have to put it out there that I'm only going by the photos I've seen. I haven't seen one in person. And there have been more than a couple times where I saw something in a photo and I went, 
mm, not sure. You see it in person, you go, oh my God, that looks spectacular. Or, you, or you know, it's the other way. You just go, oh, it's even worse. <laughs> so, so, so you're basically describing me when the stealth jersey came out. Because when I saw the leaked picture, I was like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And then I... <laughs> And then I saw it in person, and I'm like, oh, crap. Nice. That's, uh, yeah, and I have four, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> Does that include the one you're trying to currently get rid of? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, so five? No, uh, so the one I'm getting trying to get rid of is not a stealth jersey. We'll talk later. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, Rocket clearly was like, yeah, I'm, I was done with this show 10 minutes ago. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, boy, it does make it a little difficult to say, Hey, where can they find you when she's already left? Uh, anyway, uh, we will see you next week. This was show 81. Thank you very much for tuning in to the, uh, no show 80 next week will be 81. Thank you very much for tuning in. God damn. See, this is what happens when we go long. This is what happens when we go long. Uh, but uh, if all things work out as we hope, next week's show will be actually live and we will plan a segment to take questions and comments from the people watching, the good people watching at, at, at home or at their local bar or wherever they shall be. So that said, Jerk, where can the good people find you on the social media? So the good people... Can f- and even the bad people. Yeah, I was going to say, they, even the assholes, they can find me. Yeah, if you want to know what's going on for the uninformed fan, you should come to my Twitter account. It is at hockey underscore jerk on Twitter. Um, I I don't know. I always struggle trying to explain what you get out of my Twitter account. But if you like laughing, that's where you should go. If you like having a conversation, that's where you should go. If you like perfectly timed GIFs, and YouTube clips. That's where you should go. And you should also follow our good friend Rocket Backhander. I don't know what happened. Maybe a tree fell on her or something. But sorry, oh, sorry, I'm here. I'm here. Rocket Backhander. I was and literally she's about back. To tell, I was literally about to tell people to go follow you on Twitter. So, no. So <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is. I'm so sorry. I missed out on the last. I need to just step away from the microphone real fast. Hi, my name is Rocket Backhander, and I apparently have to do things other than this. Yeah, so you can check me out on the Twitter machine. It's R Backhander76. It's capital R, capital B, little Ackhander76. Or you can check out my photographs over on Instagram. Uh, yeah. Instagram, Rocket Backhander, one word. I don't, they're, they're fun pictures. Sometimes they're boring pictures. Sometimes they're dark pictures. Sometimes they're light pictures. They're pictures nonetheless. You should check them out. There you go. And <laughs> for me, on the social media, AJ underscore strong, all the social media channels uh, to let you know, give you a little heads up of what's coming up or actually letting you know what has passed as well. We recently did a talk with Drew Remenda, former coach of the San Jose Sharks and broadcaster. Go check that out. Uh, we do have a new show going this season every other week talking about the San Jose Barracuda and the baby sharks. Ooh, Barracuda. With that, coming up, uh, a couple interviews that are in the pipeline, and in fact, this Thursday, one that should be significant. Let me just put it that way. Interview happening Thursday morning, and with the Sharks game happening Thursday night, uh, means that interview will probably drop Friday, so look for a brand new interview that I'm excited about this Friday. Uh, other than that, do us a favor as always, hit the subscribe button, follow us on all the social media channels, give us a like, give us a review on iTunes, do us a favor, help us grow the channel if you will. And with that, we'll sign off and say between now and next week for show 81, he's Jerk, she's Rocket, I'm AJ, have a good night.